you know, unfortunately, I think we reverted some mm -hmm. that once again, there's going to have to be a resurgence that um, the dominant community still doesn't recognize, I think, to some degree, the kinds of discrepancies in treatment. Mm -hmm school system, one of the things I know is that I'd like to see African American parents and other parents of color be more involved in the schools. Yeah. I currently am employed as the Foundation Director, Topeka Public Schools Foundation Director. But part of my job is also to be ombudsman for the school district, which means that parents that are disgruntled, have had some kind of dissatisfaction, that call central office mainly to talk to Dr. Anderson, that they usually talk to me. Mm -hmm. And my job is to look at the concern that's being brought to our attention, see is it systemic, is it something that's at the building level, is it a conflict of personality, and help resolve that. So I have, a, I think, a perspective that many don't have about what happens with our school system. And we have some good things going on, very good things, without a doubt. But I think there are still some concerns that parents of color feel that they're not being treated adequately. And sometimes they're right, sometimes they're not, if I'm going to be honest. But the, the important thing is, as long as there's that perception, it means that we still have work to do, that we need to make sure that everybody that has a child that walks through those doors feels welcome. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that they do. And right. partly, I think it's our job to do that as the personnel that work at Topeka Public Schools. And so whether we feel they're wrong or right, we have a responsibility to be accountable to that and figure out what we can do differently. I don't know that staff always feel that way, quite honestly. Most mm -hmm. of them do. Mm -hmm. We have a very good staff. Mm -hmm. But just with the tone of the nation, there's been a change in terms of how we respond. Mm -hmm. uh, we're still at a place where we say, I don't see color. That bothers me because if you don't see color, then you don't see me. So we're trying to get people to understand that it's important that you do see that color. It's important that you see that color in a positive light and not as a negative, like, oh no, here she comes and she's gonna cause problems, but here she comes and how can I help her? Mm -hmm. What is it that we can do differently? So we're still dealing with race. Um, we're dealing with race in similar manners as we did the last time. We don't want to deal with it. So we try to ignore that that's a problem. We try to ignore that our own biases don't get in the way of how we respond to people. And um, it's, a, it's concerning, quite honestly. I think the other thing is we're seeing policies and that are harmful to African Americans and we're acting like they aren't there. If we talk about predatory lending and all these establishments in our community that target mm -hmm. people of color and poor people, I might add, and we're not doing anything. When we still in 2019 have an infant mortality rate for African American babies that is twice as high as it is for anybody else and we're not a third world country, this is America, that bothers me. So we, I mean, there are so many things that we could address that look like the era that we thought we were through with. So as one of the speakers said recently, um, the war's not over. You know, we win so many battles, but we've still got work to do. And if we become complacent, mm -hmm. we're gonna be back in the times where people don't have a right to say anything. I think that they were saying we should be allowed to go anywhere that we want to and be received and accepted as human beings, not as people of color or someone that's different. And to some degree, it's been addressed but not accomplished because while we potentially have the opportunity or laws that say we can go anywhere we want to, there are still barriers 
We know that there's still redlining that goes on. We know that right here in Topeka, Kansas, realtors still say, don't send your kids to Topeka Public Schools. Build out in Auburn, Washburn, or you don't want to get a house here. So it, it, there's more covert kind of things that are occurring that you can't necessarily put your finger on, but you know it's still a problem. I know that as an African-American female, I can walk into a store and I'm still followed. I'm still asking, eh, do I want help? Yes, yeah, sometimes I want help. Do I want to feel like because I'm an African-American that you're watching me closer than anybody else? I don't. And I can say having lived here all my life and knowing a lot of people, the interesting thing for me is that I can go to the store and if I don't have on makeup, I can be totally incognito mm -hmm. because white people don't look at black people. They don't pay any attention. They know per personally some African Americans. And then, you know, maybe that's true. That's not true. I'm not going to say that. Mm -hmm. I know every white person, whether they have on makeup or they don't. When I run into a store, I can see them and I know that's Susie. Right. Somehow I can be someplace and I've said it to my children watch this. I try not to go out looking bad too often. But, <laughs> but sometimes. Yeah, you'll run to the store or something and you're totally blind. So it's like there's something still wrong in terms of our having an ability to see people, to see each other. I'm concerned still as a mother of three African-American male children that they're in danger. It feels like they've become prey in America. I am encouraged by our current police chief who seems to have an understanding of that and is trying to do something differently and make it better. But still, driving while black, walking while black, shopping while black, Just being black. breathing while black yes. is still yes. something alarming in mm -hmm. the United States of America that's not much different than it was in 1954. Right. The difference is we supposedly have laws that protect us, but when I look at what's happening nationally again with immigration policies and babies being separated from parents and all of that based on race, mm -hmm. it's concerning, you know, not just for African Americans, but for people of color in our community if you could wake up tomorrow morning, snap your fingers, what would be that one thing you would just, you'd be like, that's what I'm changing? That we would genuinely have heart for each other, not just have voice or bring voice to what we know we're supposed to do, but somehow that would be something that innately is what we want to do, the embracing and welcoming of each other, and that may be too much. So if we can't actually embrace each other, what it, tolerance is not enough. Mm -hmm. That we learn to stand up for each other. When you see a wrong, say something. Not just turn your head because it didn't happen to us. And I think all of us, to some degree, are guilty of that. But you hear that racist joke, you hear or see something at work that you know isn't right. And sometimes I don't even want to deal with it, so I don't say anything. So I guess what I would change is that we would all stand up and have the courage of our conviction and knowing that when something's wrong, to call it out and try to help make it right. Mm -hmm. Pie in the sky. Mm -hmm.